Do you think he's going to do it? I actually don't think he will. Hello? Oh. Are you scared? There's really nothing to be anxious about. Right, you're probably wondering what the frick is going on here. So, nothing. What are we here to do? We're here to make tech fun again. We've had our heads down working hard on our shiny new product, the Phone 2. But before we get to that, we've noticed recently Kyle's been a bit flat. He's tired doing important CEO stuff. And to be honest, we were a bit worried. How can you make tech fun again if you forgot what fun is? I was doing some research and I found this book called The Power of Fun. Do you remember the other day he said he had a fear of roller coasters? Mm. All the other roller coasters, it's my fear. Yeah, we'll keep that out of the loop then. Basically, he says if you've lost your funk, there's these activities that you can do to rediscover your fun. You need to do activities that make you feel laughter and a sense of letting go. Things that make you feel free from self-judgment. Step out of normal life. Childlike sense of excitement and joy. What has all of these qualities, Jules? Yeah, I get it's a roller coaster, but I'm worried. So we checked Nothing's Address book and then fired off some DMs. When finally, who gets back to us? The king of YouTube, Casey Neistat. Okay, we're in New York, we're here to meet Casey. Carl's literally over there. He literally has no idea, and I kind of feel bad for him. Yo, there he is. The doggy. Carl, morning, man. You excited to see Casey? Uh, it's been a long time, we've been talking some content. Mm. Yeah, man, you've got loads to talk about, haven't you? You're... With all this water, I think you wanted to change. Oh, we're gonna go to Casey's place. Yeah, no, no, we're, we're going to meet Casey. It's just I think he's changed like where we're meeting and stuff. I. Why didn't you guys tell me until now? Um, yeah, my bad. That's my bad. That's a miscommunication from me, G. My bad. Okay, I've never been here before. Yeah, weird. This feels weird. Is it a prank? Like, you're just always shooting content. I'm not sure what you're gonna do with it. What do you mean? You didn't check the entire plan? All right, bye. All right, come with me. I don't know, bro, you gotta talk to him, man. I don't know why you're getting mad at me. It's f up. Kyle! Casey! Casey! Good to see you, What's guys. What's up, man? Good to see you again, bro. Good to nice see, to see you. you. Good to see you. Carl. Why did we come here? People are talking. We've been talking. And you know, the mission of nothing is to make tech fun again, and somewhat ironically, your peeps here, drooling mainly, they say you kind of lost your fun. I mean, I've been busy, but I don't think I've become boring. Brother, let's be real, man. You've been flat recently, have you not? Think of it like an intervention. A fun intervention. Uh, Let me think about it. Do you think he's going to do it? I actually don't think he will. Like, I think he's actually scared. Okay, let's do it. Okay. Let's go! I thought this was a joke. I didn't know he was actually scared of roller coasters. <laughs> Got a hard stop at one though. Is there a way of making it go slower? Good luck! Apparently not. No. <sighs> what are you doing, man? We gotta go. Are you scared? I'm scared, yeah. This is not bad, I promise. This is a baby ride. She's going, are you scared? What's your name? Cynthia. Cynthia says it's not bad. All right, enjoy your ride. Enjoy the ride, Carl. Enjoy the ride. Okay. Are you having fun yet? Uh, yeah. The beauty of roller coasters is that they start slow. Uh, is he filming? Um, yeah. So in the power of fun here, the author, Kath, and she introduces a checklist of things that you can do to see if you're introducing or orienting your life towards fun. Now let me ask you, have you ever been anxious in a way where it's affecting your daily life and the way that you can do You on LinkedIn? Mm-hmm. I've just switched open to work. Another thing is here, she said, when you're engaged... Ah! Ah! How was it? How was that? Good? Uh, kind of terrible, right? It's my phobia, you know? <laughs> it's 
So we've known each other for like what? Probably seven, so. eight, 20, eight. carry the three, eight years. Yeah. I got to know you when you were still at OnePlus. Mm -hmm. I was most excited about how you engaged with the community at OnePlus. Mm -hmm. And then when you called me and told me that you're starting your own thing, I was most excited about your perspective on technology. Mm -hmm. If we rewind the time back to when we were fundraising for the first time, I was really anxious. Like you were the, one of the first people to take a chance on us. I've never said this. On that call you said to me, you're like, I have to, be straightforward with you. You know, we could fail. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I understand, Carl, but I was excited and I was excited to be a part of it. I invested because I believe in you and I believe mm -hmm. in the vision. And I think it's exciting, but also I did invest with, you know, real money. How's How's nothing doing? You know, we're in a very challenging space, but I think things have been going pretty well recently. We're almost at 2 million devices shipped. That's gonna be a really nice milestone. Recently, we won a lot of awards for our products. Our media reviews are getting better and better. Our teams are getting better and stronger, especially engineering. So that means we're gonna be able to do a lot more cool stuff on the product. That's good, right? It's very good. Okay, <laughs> okay. Roller coasters aside, the reason why you're in New York City right now is because Phone 2 is coming out. Yes. Can I see it? Of course. Here it is. Okay, similar design language. We don't want to change the design for every generation so you don't recognize it. We want to build icons, products that you can recognize from 10 meters away. Why does it feel so good? What am I? We made the back uh, curved. So the glass here is, has a subtle curve. How much of nothing's emphasis when building a product like this is, is hardware versus software? I think the magic happens in the intersection between hardware and software. Um, with the Phone 1, we focus a lot on the hardware design, and software was only the basics. Mm. How do you make the battery life okay? How do you make the system stable? This year, because we have a lot more resources in our engineering team, we can do a lot more on the software side as well. This feels expensive, Carl. Mm. Are the materials the same? Is Every, there any plastic? Everything you touch is either metal or glass. So okay. it's aluminum, 100% recycled, and the front and the back is Gorilla Glass, so it's scratch resistant. And the camera module is black. I like that contrast. Oh yeah, and the color is different, right? So we had a darker version for the Phone 1, now it's kind of gray to accentuate the glyphs further. So if like my parents are buying me a phone, I can't get the $1,500 iPhone. Mm -hmm. What's your pitch? Like why the nothing phone too? I mean, the industry has gotten really boring for me. Agreed. I used to watch all the Apple keynotes, even if it meant staying up really late. Um, in the last five years, it's gotten very iterative. They're not really gonna push the envelope. So we thought, you know, if we don't do this, probably nobody else will. We're trying to kind of pick up where innovation left off. We're trying to make the industry more fun again. This is our second step along the way. So if you want to support a small team with big ambitions and uh, doing things differently, I think this is the phone to get. So let me push back on that. At the end of the day, all I care about is how good is this thing in my pocket. Mm -hmm. This thing feels pretty, feels pretty great. I mean, that's, like... that's kind of like table stakes, right? So a phone needs to be really solid, no matter if it comes to the camera or the charging or the battery life or how smooth the system is. Like we have to have that unlock first before talking about anything else, like the cliff interface or that we want to bring so in. So you see it as a given, like this is the hardware, the phone, the experience is that good. It meets that standard. It does. I mean, our team has decades of experience in this industry, so this is not new to us. What's new is that we're bringing innovation back to our industry. And then colors. This like slate gray is mm -hmm. sexy, and then white. Yeah, we got the white, the really iconic color. Do you have it? Yeah, here it is. So is awesome. this is the phone too. I mean, we made the Glyph interface a lot more functional. Hopefully people are going to really enjoy using it. And from a performance perspective, we upgraded all the internals. So the CPU, the processor, the camera, it's all much faster than before, much better than before. Is it on a level with like today's flagships? I think it can stand head to head with all the flagships out there. Does this still have the bent screen to maintain the same bezel? So it is a flexible OLED, but we made the bezels on all four sides uh, not only equal, but also slimmer than before. What's your passcode, man? This one is zero, 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 zero. You know, there are hackers out there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, congrats, and congrats to the whole team. This thing mm -hmm. is a, a triumph. It's absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. And I know it was a lot of work, and I know I was like giving you a hard time with the roller coaster, but you know, they say, the reward for good work is more work. So if this thing is as successful as I hope it is, then next year you'll be even less fun. I'll do my best to put you in a more compromised position and make you smile. Uh oh. So this phone is launching soon and I need to shoot a keynote. Okay. I was thinking maybe you can teach me how to vlog. Yeah, I can teach you how to. 
I can teach you how to vlog. Cool. The most important thing is to hold the camera above eye line. I, I got an idea here. Hold this. Uh, all right. Get them on this side of you. Oh, uh, okay. And you got to get stronger. 30 curls per set, eight to 10 sets. Effortlessly hold up this camera. That's kind of the gist. Cool. Thank you. I think I got it. What, really? Yeah. Thanks. That's it, huh? Hold it up. Yeah. Phone two. It's been a busy year, but we think we're ready. We still remember when tech used to be fun and exciting. Every year there will be groundbreaking new innovations on the market. But sadly, that's not the case anymore. And we understand, if you're a big player with a big market share, you can sustain yourself by creating similar products every single year. But where does that leave the consumer? This stone represents the weight of market share forcing creative output. So the system is rigged. You have your creative inputs, you have your dreams to create new products and new features, but the system is set up that no matter how you play the game, you always end up creating the same products every single year. And this isn't the tech industry that I remember. I remember it being exciting and limitless. And I hear what you're saying. Nothing only makes smartphones and headphones, but it's an important step in the right direction in re-energizing our industry. We believe there needs to be someone who isn't everything for everyone to inject fun and excitement back into tech. And that's where we come in. Fortunately for nothing, we can take risks. We're smaller and not locked into the same machine as the bigger players are. That means innovating again. That means designing products that are beautiful and look different from everything else out there. And that means paying attention to the smallest details so we can make everything as perfect as possible. <laughs> phone 2 is a smartphone that's going to make the tech world excited about smartphones again. So why can we do this? Why do we feel so confident? In 2021, we launched our first product at Year 1 and told the world about our ambitions. Year 1 showed our approach to transparent design and put us on the map as a design-forward tech company. In 2022, we integrated hardware and software and launched Phone 1. It received a few awards and great feedback from many reviewers. This was another step in our mission to make tech fun again. Which brings us to now, 2023. This is our biggest step yet with the Phone 2. With a bigger team, stronger supply chain, and more experience, we made the Glyph interface more useful. We focused a lot more on our software, improved our camera, along with a big performance upgrade. We're also aware that there's a lot of demand for nothing products in the US, so we're also excited to announce that the Phone 2 will be officially made available in the US. Okay, enough of that. Let me tell you about the Phone 2, starting with design. Back to London. Hey, Carl. Hey, how's it going? All right, thanks, you. Good to see you. Good to see you. What are you up to? Just uh, shooting a vlog. Okay. So, so what's new over here? This one is a side project we're working on for the store. It's very soft. Pretty weird, that one. <laughs> Oh, are you using the um, timer? Oh yeah, I just set it to uh, it's 25. Where's Chris? Is he in the sound room? Hey Chris. I was doing a, a vlog. How's it uh, going? What are, what are you working on? Uh, the next phone. Why don't we t walk through our audience, um, the process on how we got to the final design? Sure. <laughs> no, go for it. All right, so let's talk about the Phone 2 design. I'm here in London in our design studio with our design director, Adam. Why are some products more iconic than others? And what are we trying to do when it comes to building these icons? We work really hard on how to create something that stands apart from everyone else. Where do we want to be in five years or 10 years? Uh, often that can really help us to take the steps towards that vision. Does the dream change over time? Yeah, I think it does. There might be things in the world that change. There might be technology that changes. And then what we've got to balance with that is we don't ever want to be predictable because we definitely want to surprise people and surprise ourselves. Earlier we talked about the Phone 2 design and I've heard you describe it as like a high resolution version. 
mm. of the phone one. What do you mean by that? It's taking everything up a level across everything. You know, the OS, the, the glyph interface, the materials, the design, the textures, functionally as well. Mm. The, the display, the camera, how snappy it is, the processor, all these things. It's also thinking about a level of softness that we've kind of brought to it in a number of ways. I know we also did a lot of work on the glyphs, so maybe we can tell our audience about that. There's more glyphs, first of all, so that gives us more opportunity to be more expressive. But secondly, we also have more control, which means that we can start offering up new functions. I've seen a lot of comments online saying that a phone one was just a good phone with the disco lights on the back. Would you agree to that? And would you say the phone two is different? I wouldn't agree to that. With things like the glyphs, we're asking people to believe in something different a little bit. We see that the future might be a little bit different so for us, we think that an experience that is memorable and does something for you is worth it, and that's not a gimmick. But I think some of those online comments were not entirely unfair. We knew our roadmap, we knew where we wanted to take the Glyph interface, but by the time we launched the Phone 1, there wasn't a ton of features. But luckily, over the past year, our engineering team has gotten so much stronger, and now for the Phone 2, there's a lot more utility and functionality behind the Glyph interface. So. As an example, if there's an important app that you really care about, mm. this light will always be on. Or utilizing this section of the Glyph for a countdown timer. App by app notifications, a Glyph composer. Personally, the one that I'm the most excited about is, you know, when you're calling an Uber, just to be able to use this glyph to see how close or far away the driver is from you without always checking your phone. For sure, because the problem is when you turn your phone over to check the Uber, then you see something else. You've got an email and then something else and something else and you're sucked in before you know it. So this layer is the top surface notifications to just stop you getting sucked in give people kind of the ease of mind that what's important to them can still be visible, but also enable them to be more present in life. Yeah, and these are just some of the features that are coming out at launch, and we have more ideas that we hope to build over time. So we talked about the Glyph interface. Why don't we cover the rest of the external design? We've got this kind of really nice new display. We've still got a completely uniform border when you've got a kind of bigger chin mm -hmm. on the bottom. It just doesn't look right. We've moved the front-facing camera to the center, so that's nice and symmetrical. On the back, we've got the 3D glass, which makes it feel nice and thin. We have these new camera surrounds. Um, because we have our new camera, we wanted to kind of highlight that, so we have these black bezels, which looks really pro. So a lot of people whom I've shown the product to tell me it feels really nice feels more expensive than before. What would you say is the reason to that? I guess there's probably a few things. There's the 3D glass and the way that joins the metal midframe. It kind of feels quite special. Mm. It's a nice tactile thing, you know, along then with the software, along with the glyphs that are enhanced. Even this dark gray and the way the colors are balanced to get enough depth, but not too much contrast, many contributing factors. To play devil's advocate, the phone two does look a bit similar to the phone one. What would you say to that? You know, there's always this balance between between giving some continuity and improving what you've done before and building on it and then doing something completely new. And, and as a company, we're not short of ideas. We actually could do a completely different phone this time. We could do a completely different one next time. In a way, it's even easier to keep doing new yes. things. Really, we're, we're new. We've done one phone. We've done um, some earbuds. We've made a big splash. If we change too quickly, we may start to blend in. You almost start to build an icon. You start to build a mythology. And you start to build something that customers connect with, just like we do with the brands that we love and the companies that we love. we got to build really, really beautiful products, but we need to really have solid foundations. OK, I think I'm happy. I think that's all for me. Cool. All right. Can I have uh, your mic? Very well. Welcome, yeah, sure. What are you doing now? I got a flight oh. to catch. So earlier in this video, uh, you also seen the phone too, but that wasn't the final, final version. This is the final version. So it's really exciting to see this for the first time. I don't think you're gonna be able to see any difference on camera, but yeah, if you hold it for yourself, you can see some small differences. It's great to finally feel this in your hands. So this is one of our production sites. We have another one in Chennai in India. In London, we spoke to Adam about design, but let's dive a little bit deeper. We knew that we had created an icon with the Phone 1, 
So for the Phone 2, it was important for us to develop that design story further. The Phone 2 has been all about refinement. Visually, we've evolved the look. With higher resolution textures and upgraded geometry and more consistent coloring, this feels way more refined than the Phone 1. It took over 50 prototypes to get what we believe to be perfect. In fact, this is prototype number 54. When I held this for the first time, I knew that we made a worthy successor to the Phone 1. It doesn't just look more premium, more importantly, it feels more premium in the hand. With a slimmer mid-frame and a rounded pillow glass back, the phone just feels way more ergonomic and satisfying to hold. As you can see, we kept the same symmetrical bezels as on the Phone 1, but we made them even slimmer. We've also moved the selfie camera from the side to the middle to give you that satisfying and symmetrical look. The Phone 2 display is way more advanced. With LTPO technology, it can automatically change its refresh rate from 1 Hz to 120 Hz, depending on the scenario. So for instance, on our always-on display, it runs at 1 Hz, which is super power efficient. And speaking about power, we further reduced the power consumption of the display by 30% by switching to a new and more advanced IC with smaller transistors. Finally, this upgraded display features better consistency, color reproduction, and motion in low light. This is a flagship display in its true sense. Let's talk about performance. So the processor plays a big role here. For the Phone 2, we added the best-in-class and proven Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, upgrading from a 7 series processor on the Phone 1. Overall performance has improved by 80% and app opening speeds are twice as fast as before. We've also increased the battery capacity by 200 milliamp hours and made the software more efficient. It's hard to put a fixed number on something like battery life because we all use our phones differently, but personally, I get about 40% more compared to the Phone 1. So here is where we test and install the camera. I've been living with the Phone 2 for the last couple of months, and I can confidently say that this camera can go up against any flagship out there. Smartphone cameras have gotten really good in the last couple of years, and when the light conditions are great, anybody can take a good photo. However, it gets more complicated in edge cases. And usually there's only two ways to go, hardware and software. When it comes to hardware, it's all about increasing the sensor size or the size of the lens so you can capture more light. However, these decisions come with trade-offs because you need to change your design. Maybe your design has to be bigger or thicker, and these are compromises we have to think really carefully about. On the front is our biggest sensor upgrade. We now have the 32 megapixel Sony IMX615, double the megapixel count, and a 30% larger sensor size than on the Phone 1. And on the back, we've upgraded the 50 megapixel main sensor to Sony IMX890. The main advantage for this new sensor is that it's faster and can deliver up to 4,000 times more data to the ISP. Or you can focus on the software, tuning and computational photography. We believe in doing both, but as a tech company, we believe we should focus more on the software side. We focused on two key challenging camera scenarios, dynamic range and motion. Say, for instance, you're on holiday somewhere sunny. Your subject is standing in the shadows. Meanwhile, the background is quite bright. You take a photo of your subject, it turns out fine, but then you realize that the background is overexposed. The photo becomes useless. Our new advanced HDR allows you to capture a higher dynamic range to solve this. All you have to do is point and shoot. In the background, the Phone 2 is capturing the same scene in eight frames with different levels of exposure in the raw domain, which results in three times more data processed compared to the Phone 1. Advanced HDR selects the best details from each image and then fuses it together for the most true to life result. Let's move on to motion. Normally when there's movement in the subject you're capturing, it can result in a blurry photo, which is really frustrating because you don't get to relive that moment again. For this, we've upgraded our motion detecting algorithms to more accurately detect moving subjects so you can get that clear shot every time. These days, people are using their smartphones to capture more and more video. And I'm happy to say that we made similar improvements across the board when it comes to the video capabilities of the Phone 2 as well. Our vision for the smartphone camera is one that's easy to use and can be trusted. And with the Phone 2, we made a big leap forward. Okay, Carl, so we need you to do like a Casey-style match cut. We're not gonna be with you on the other side, uh, so just put your hands up and then just have an awareness of where your hands are, okay? Oh, so much work. Hey, what's going on? Welcome back. Long time no see. What are you doing, you filming? Yeah, we're uh, shooting the keynote. What are you working on? OS 2. These are headphones. Do you have a few minutes to talk more in depth about the oh, yeah. Nothing OS 2.0? Yeah, sure. Yeah? Yeah, let's okay. do that. If you were to summarize the current state of mobile OS in like one sentence, how would you do that? Nothing much changed. 
we still have a very similar structure. We had the first glimpse of the iPhone, right? Like we have company logos on the home screen, page system, grid. It's very linear and our home screens are becoming cluttered. So we need to figure out how we're going to facilitate all of that, right? This is the first time we, we actually have injected that nothing DNA into the OS. But now 2.0 is elevating our design, our brand um, design language. What are the headline features that you're excited about? Obviously, what the user is going to see first is this bold, monochromatic design, right? Mm -hmm. We really want the user to be intentional about what they're doing, um, straightforward, minimal. Our phone home screen is basically like a canvas for advertising. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Every app has their own colors, their own logo, and we're just like scrolling through a lot of ads every day. Yeah. I think stripping back the colors is kind of like removing some of the power from those apps and giving it back to the consumer. Yeah. Just looking at this, everything feels quite organized, even in like different form factors. Yeah, you have this very clean, symmetrical grid. We just took it a step back. Grids exist already, so what's different? Take a look at an Android phone. There's so much customization going on, and, and that's fine. We have the responsibility to design all of these widgets to, to fit together, right? While we're on the topic of widgets, what are the ones that you're most proud of? My personal favorite is uh, the pedometer. It's a very funny way um, how, we, how we did it. Any other widgets that you want to highlight? Screen time is, is pretty interesting. Um, again, it's, it's, it's done in our fashion. So bringing all of these widgets to OS 2.0 and expanding it is going to be a major stepping stone in the right direction. It brings functionality, it empowers the user, um, it's more intentional use, and yeah, we're very, very proud of it. Sounds very exciting. It is. Beyond just having a beautiful and well thought through operating system, the basics just need to really work. App opening speeds, animation speeds, motion design, these things all contribute. But in, in addition to that, I think a lot of work has to be done on the battery life optimization while not sacrificing performance. So I think we're in a really exciting time in our development. So last year with the Phone 1, we just focused on releasing something clean, yeah. stable. With the Phone 2, this is the first time that we're able to introduce some of our own ideas into the OS. But the real test will come when the users actually get the phone. Yeah, no pressure. All right. Thanks for this. What's next? It's time to ship. Well, that's the phone too. In these videos, you always see a couple of people talking about the product, but in reality, there's hundreds of people behind the scenes working together to deliver all these products that we launch. So I wanted to extend a big thank you to the entire Nothing team for coming together on this mission and building this product together. Also, a big thank you to the community for helping us test and perfect the product as we were developing it. And finally, a huge thank you to everybody who believes in Nothing. We're a passionate team with a really exciting roadmap ahead of us. There's a lot to look forward to, but today is all about the phone too. I'm confident you're gonna love it and I can't wait to hear your feedback. Uh, Carl, just a question. After this experiment, do you feel more fun? I've always been fun. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Woo! He was laughing and smiling on this one, guys. I think we've had some breakthroughs today. The Phone 2 launches worldwide this week, starting with drops in London and New York. I hope you'll be there in person. For more information on the specifics, go to nothing.tech, where you can also pre-order and get info on exclusives.